ドクターガオーなんちゃって What is going on YouTube? This is the Last Musketeer, and welcome to part 15 of the Ark Knights free to play progression series. So we're going to start this video right away with H64, and this one was a bit of an annoying one for me, but I figured I'd show it because when I'm in between some of the events or some of the other stage clearing for CM, I do try to do some of these H stages, and this one was a bit more annoying to me, so I figured I might as well show it, and it's also the first time I've actually used Milanar myself, because I do think that he is absolutely insane. And because of that, I try not to use them. I try not to borrow as much as possible. But these H stages are very annoying and can be a lot easier if you have a decent way to deal with a lot of what is coming at you. So I decided to go ahead and use them, make it a little bit easier on myself. Now, this is going to be the only H stage that I do for this video because I normally do them in my downtime in between events. Because I do also have some challenge mode stages that I need to do in the regular campaign. And also some of these side story missions, there's a lot of the actual side story events that I haven't finished yet. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff I can do, especially to earn OP because I have a lot of big things coming and, and I don't want to spoil anything, I don't want to risk spoilers, so I'm not going to put any spoilers in this, but I am excited about something that's coming up because I did watch a little bit of the live stream. So very, very happy. And I'm going to be looking forward to that. I'm going to have to be saving some pulls now. A lot more than I was expecting to have to. So it's going to be a little bit weird going forward through this. But uh, to talk about this stage a little bit, Frost Nova is coming up. And as you can see, Milanar just absolutely shreds her. I have no problem getting rid of that first phase. Now the second phase, he's more than likely not going to be up for it. But I did try to stall a little bit just to see if I could buy some time. But of course... It wasn't meant to be, so we're going to take him away before he gets knocked out there, just to save a little bit of time. And then I'm going to stall as much as possible here, just to make sure that I can guarantee the win on this one. Because if she gets too close, it could be a big problem. And more than likely, I will end up losing if she does her skill into a bad spot to take out uh, some of my guards. So... Right now, as you can see, I'm just stalling as much as possible with my fast deploys, anything that I have extra, like Bagpipe or Swire, for instance, and then I throw Milinar down, and with the skill active, all I need now is just for her to walk up and get absolutely decimated by Milinar. Such a strong operator, uh, but she is a bit of a topic right now because Season 2 of the anime is coming and is going to have her arc in it, which I am excited about. I haven't caught up with the first season yet, but I will get to that point, and hopefully when season two is out, uh, I'll probably just try to binge watch them or something and talk about it there. But I got a lot of new recruits this video, and I'm very excited to show them off. Neural being one of them that I got from just a random tag. I think I had defense up, and I actually pulled a Neural. I was very excited about that, though I don't know how much I'm actually going to use her, because I do have some very good options uh, for doing what she does. Uh, but I decided to go for a tin pull on the Reed Banner, because Reed Altar was one that I really, really wanted, and, you know, I, I just wasn't sure if I was going to pull for it because I have the Yato Altar coming up, and I don't have many pulls. Uh, but I decided, you know what, I might as well. And so I did a tin pull, and I was like, you know what, I'll use another one and just quick go ahead, and I ended up pulling her. I was extremely lucky with that one. 11 pulls is fantastic, and that is another one that I no longer have to worry about. So, read alter down. I am curious how everybody has done on this banner, how your pulls are going, and what you're actually saving up for next, because the next banner, the next op that's coming out, um, is interesting, but I don't know that I'll actually pull for him. I might do a 10 pull and just try my luck there, but I'm not going to go all in for sure, because I have a lot a lot I need to save up for, especially with the one that's coming out uh, that we just got news on. I'm more than excited about that. So, uh, like I said, I'm not going to go into it because of spoilers, but it is one of the happiest moments for me in this game. So, moving on to some of the actual event stages. This is stage 7 of the normal part, the story part, and then I will show the boss stage as well, and then we'll move on to the EX stages, but the challenge mode version of it, because I don't want to water down the video too much. I want to talk about a few things, uh, but mainly uh, I, I just want to show some of the harder stages, just because I like to show how I actually did them. But for this one mainly, uh, my lineup is 
actually extremely strong. I, I've got a very, very nice lineup at this point. Uh, Suzerain has been a great addition, as I've talked about last time. Uh, Mustima with the maxed module is fantastic and is great for belling me out of a lot of situations that I wouldn't have previously been able to handle uh, just because it buys me so much time uh, to actually work some of this out. Uh, but also, you know, at times, Mustima was actually a hindrance in this event because she would slow them down too much Basically to the point that I would knock out the enemy and then I wouldn't be able to get them close enough to one of my defenders to actually attack them while they're invis. So they just regenerate, it would cause problems, so I ended up having to take her out of the lineup for this. Uh, but everywhere else, she's basically a mainstay. I absolutely love this operator and she has been huge for me, but that is puzzle grabbed. And Puzzle seems like an absolutely insane vanguard for the DP rate. I would like to try Puzzle together with Contabile. Maybe I can replace Myrtle in that situation, not use Myrtle so much. Though I do enjoy the ease that comes with using Myrtle. But getting the 500k LMD from this and also the other rewards is fantastic because I needed them really bad for all the upgrades that I'm trying to make. But I've already spent them all and I'm basically gone, but I decided to do a tin pull on this one as well to try my luck. The li Liaison Medal popped up, meaning that I got a new champ, and when I saw that I was very hopeful that it was a 6 star, and it did end up being one. And so I got Blemishine, who I am very, very excited about, because she's going to be fantastic paired with some of my defenders, going to make Mudrock shine even more than she already does. So I'm very, very happy with that pull. Um, other pulls that I would have been happy with on that one would probably be Silver Ash, because I realize now just how good he is in a lot of situations. The Invis reveal is fantastic, uh, so I would have really liked that. Uh, Horn would have been another one that would have been fantastic for me. I, I just really want that Invis reveal, just for those certain moments that I run into. But we are moving on, moving forward to the boss stage of the regular story event. So, this one is not too bad. I do think this boss is incredibly annoying with how much health it gets, and then the second phase just hits like a absolute nuke. Just makes it a really, really annoying situation to deal with, but not too bad overall if you can stall her out and keep her from just decimating with the skill usage that she has. So the main thing is, I just tried to stall as long as I could at the first part using Suzerain and Kawura, because at first I just tried to nuke her down with true damage and then realized that you would get overwhelmed on the side lanes really easily if you did that. So best thing to do at that point is just to bait as long as you possibly can and then I'm going to use Calstit to do some true damage after um, and try to get both of those phases gone. Now the one thing that you really had to look out for is the fact that whenever you're fighting this boss the second phase she uses the skill on two different people, so if you're not careful, you basically put yourself in a really, really bad situation. As you can see there, Korra got decimated, but the true damage comes in and wipes that first phase. Now what I'm going to do here is get rid of Monster, get rid of my other blockers here, uh, because she's going to walk down for a while, and all I need her to do is be in a spot uh, that Monster can get his full advantage out of and get rid of that skill. So it's only going to hit whoever is out there. It can hit up to two, but if Myrtle's the only one out there, it's only going to hit Myrtle. So what I did was bait it, and then I threw Monster down as soon as possible to build up the skill. Now the problem is, I don't think I timed it just well enough, because if I had, I probably would have taken her second phase out immediately, but Monster does go down. So at this point, I have to try to stall some more, so who better to do that than Mudrock? Except in this situation with the Burning Reeds, it's going to take away her shields quite often, which is very annoying. I threw Swire in for a little extra damage, and then once I knew Swire got hit with that skill, I just took her out, put Monster back in, and we finished the boss just like that. Nothing too hard, nothing too bad. True damage is always going to be a fantastic option for anything like this. So if you ever need somebody that is going to get rid of a boss really easy, and especially tank in that situation, Monster is always a good choice for that. I do hope in the future to get more options for dealing with bosses, because I need somebody that's got a really good burst. Um, Irene would be fantastic for that, because I saw just how good Irene was when I did the monthly squad for IS-3 just a little bit back. It was fantastic. And I got another 
top operator tag. And this is my favorite part of the video so far because I was very excited about getting this and I decided to roll the dice. There's a lot of top op melee operators, like 12 or something like that, but I wanted one in specifics, one that is my second favorite character ever, and that is Blaze. So I figured I'd roll the dice and what do you know, I got exactly who I wanted. It could not be any luckier on that. It was like a 9% chance or something like that to roll the one I wanted. I was so extremely happy. And so I'm absolutely going to go in and try to max blaze as soon as possible. I had 1.5 mil LMD saved up. I knew I had plenty of that, but it was the other resources that I was concerned about because as a free to play, you do get a decent amount if you're saving up. But if you've been leveling up operators as much as I have lately, you're going to be in a bit of a deficit, and that was the main problem. I had to scrounge around and get as much as I could. And while most of them aren't actually that hard to get, the main problem was the dual chip catalyst. I don't have very many red certs left, and farming them is not going to be daily. I'm going to be able to do that only on like certain days, and so I knew I didn't have a lot of options there, but I think I had enough during this time for Blaze herself so what I did was went in as soon as possible made as many things in the base as I could to get her to E2 because like I said my second favorite operator of all time and I wanted to make sure that I showed her the respect she deserved so I did E2 her as soon as I possibly could it didn't take me probably 10 minutes to farm the resources and make sure that I had it because that was how excited I was to do this so with E2 Blaze, I can finally use the infinite skill on her S2 to wreak havoc and hold lanes like crazy. It's going to be fantastic. I could even put Swire behind her for even more damage with that reach. It's going to be absolutely beautiful to see those two in tandem. So we'll get to using them for some of the stages, and I'll probably make it a default to where I'm using them as much as possible. Uh, so I started working on her chainsaw extension module just to make sure that I could M3 that because it is very important for the timing of the infinite to get that skill off as soon as possible. Uh, but we do a few more pulls because I have enough distinctions for a certain operator, but I wanted to try to use the 10 to see if I didn't get lucky enough to end up pulling one beforehand because I don't want to use them and then pull them uh, out of that and just get a pot. So I used the distinction I saved up for Calstit because the true damage is going to be a lifesaver for me, especially for bosses, for extremely tanky enemies, whatever I need, this is going to be a major help for me. So another massive upgrade for my account. And at this point, it's turning out that I have a lot of options. So I'm starting to get a little more well-rounded, but as you can see here, we are finally getting M3 on Blaze's second skill, so that's going to be a massive improvement. It's going to help a lot. It took me a lot of crafting to get to that point, and I love her animation with her skin. I had already pre-bought the skin before I even got her because I, that's how much I enjoy that character. I was wanting her so bad. But now it is time to try to E2 cast it, and unfortunately I didn't have the medic token, but fortunately for me, the stage was open and I got it on the first run instead of having to wait through the defender medal, so ended up taking her to E1 pretty quickly, and then I ran into my first major problem. I didn't have enough XP to actually take them to 80 at this point. I still have almost 1 mil LMD, but not enough XP. This is the first time I've ran out of XP in months. I don't know how long it's been. I've always had a surplus for quite some time, so I decided it was time to do some more farming and hopefully uh, get up to that point. But before we do any of that, we're going to move on to the challenge modes of the EX stages, and I did throw all of them in there because I figured, you know, I might as well give it a little bit of stage clearing in this video, so it's not just full progression of what my account looks like. I need uh, to show a little bit of the stages. So for this one, all it really is is greatly increased max HP, which is not hard to deal with. I do have uh, plenty of ways of dealing with it, and I figured that the best option for me here was to put Thorns on the right side. Even though he gets the slow from the swamp, he is going to be able to do enough damage to help me out there, and especially with the skill activation, get a little more attack speed, so it won't be too bad. I also put BP here to help clear some of these guys, make sure they go down when Mudrock finishes them off, because I don't think she would swing enough 
because I don't think she would swing enough to take out the enemies once she takes them down the first time, so BP is going to allow me to do that. And at this point, all I need to do is make sure that Thorn stays alive. Even if I don't have a medic that can actually reach him there, he does have the heal when he's not attacking something. So it's going to be a really, really good option for me. Uh, but I do have Perfumer as well, so the healing over time helps him a ton. And now I just have to worry about the gliders. One thing that I do love about it though is with Tex Alter, I can actually drop her on top of them. It knocks them off the glider with the stun, so I'm able to hit them with any of my units rather than just thorns or a sniper or caster here. So, a fantastic option for dealing with that. Of course, Texas is a absolutely amazing operator, and I do want to say I know at times it can be boring to watch people use really strong operators to clear stages, but I've been growing this account for so long at this point and working hard for these ops. I do just enjoy doing them. Uh, if people would prefer me to use something that's not as strong for these clears or you'd like to see some uh, different style of the content, uh, then that's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, you can voice it in the opinions, uh, what you think, what you like me to show, and what you'd like me to do, uh, that kind of style. But I, I do enjoy just getting through these, especially with how busy I am lately. I, I just, I try to get through these events quickly and get everything done uh, just so I can get these videos out because this one was delayed more than I would like it to uh, I just wanted to try to get as much of the content out as I possibly could uh, so I did wait just a bit of time to actually finish these stages but but for the moment I'm gonna stop rambling on and on about this stuff and just talk about things for a second um, I am curious about people's thoughts if you did watch the live stream that just happened for the 3.5 anniversary and for context people will have to be uh, aware of spoilers so if you do have something to post about spoilers I would appreciate if you put a spoiler alert on it but give me your thoughts on what's coming up what you're excited for because I am really curious and, I, and I'd like to talk to people about it in the comments I know uh, for the last video I didn't get to a lot of them um, I've just been busy, like I said, doing a lot of stuff, and, and I'll probably get to answering them here pretty soon. Uh, if you do have questions about something other than Arc Knights as well, feel free to ask me. Um, I, I try not to do, like, real personal questions, but if you do have something that uh, you're curious about, with whether it pertains to this game, another game, uh, something else, you know, just thoughts on something, just let me know. Uh, uh, also, of course, if you want to join the Discord server, the invite will be in the description of the video uh, feel free to join we have voice chats for people to hang out we have games people stream their art nights runs they'll stream whatever you know we got a lot going on in there so if you do want to join on that feel free uh, you know it's been <laughs> absolutely fantastic I keep up with it as much as I possibly can and if you have questions for me on there as well uh, feel free to add me or DM me I don't mind whatsoever as long as I'm not busy I will answer um, as soon as possible but I do want to talk to everyone for a second about uh, some of my other content. I, I'm going to be recording some other games and talking about them kind of in a review style, I guess, but it's not going to be gotcha related uh, because I also want to do some like road lights and stuff like that. Uh, so I will probably, if I get enough time, be uploading some of that other stuff onto my channel. Uh, so that'll be fun to do for me. I, I am excited about stuff like that. I do enjoy that it's just it's been hard for me to keep up with a lot of gotcha stuff uh, so arc knights is basically the only one that i do keep up with and i talked about it in the last video i do believe on that uh, so check out for that soon uh, i'm going to be working on some other stuff for arc knights as well that uh hopefully i can get out as soon as possible the change of hours at my job has been a little bit of a weird thing to get adjusted to, and so it's kind of messed up the way I do my videos and my timing. Uh, so that's why it's a little harder for, and a little few and far between when it comes to videos lately, though I am trying to fix that. I am trying to find a way to get around that. Uh, so like I said, I do apologize, uh, but I am going to try to get a little bit more content out and, and start uh, doing a little more because I, I do love doing the YouTube stuff has just been a little bit harder to do it so hopefully I can get a little bit more of it done in the next little bit but moving back to the actual stages for most of these the reads were a bit annoying for me to deal with once the flame proc uh, most of my ops would actually go down and especially one of the maps you had to 
really be careful because there was one that made it to where the arts did more burning damage and more arts damage overall so it would just basically nuke anyone you had on it even your healers and so that put me in a bit of a weird spot but it wasn't too hard of an event i think overall i think this event was kind of cool the enemies were a bit annoying if you didn't have great options people that have someone like silver ash and horn probably had a really fun time on these actual stages because they weren't too bad when you have ways of revealing the invis but when you don't it can be a bit of a challenge so you have to be really careful with how you do some of the placements and making sure that you have enough block otherwise you just put yourself in a really bad spot but in some good news we finally have the mastery three on the chainsaw extension module so blaze is where I want her to be right now, I, I level her up a little bit more in a latter part of this video, but we also get Calstit to E2. So now I have my true damage. This is going to be a game changer for me because this is going to help me a lot with bosses. And like I said, I don't have a good way of dealing with bosses most of the time. So this is going to be my fallback option and it's going to help a ton. So moving on, I'm going to start throwing her in my lineup a little bit more. And at times I do borrow for some of these stages because... Like I said, if you have a Silver Ash, he's fantastic for these, and I figured the best way of counteracting a lot of what is going on here is going to be just throwing him in at any spot that I can actually do. So, I almost slipped one through, as you saw there, with Thorns, but the timing was good enough that I could get Thorns down and also deal with the one on the bottom with Tank Salter because I couldn't throw anyone else in that position without a little more DP for that. And... I'm only using Myrtle for DP at the moment. I haven't put Bagpipe back in my lineup. I also haven't been using Contabile, though she is fantastic, as I always support uh, people using her. She is a great operator. Uh, but I haven't necessarily needed her for the moment. I've been trying to experiment a little bit more with changes into my lineup and trying to find out the best place to put some of these operators because there are a lot of them uh, that I just hadn't had room for whenever I have multiple you know vanguards in there but myrtle does a good enough job on her own to really get things started uh, so i think at this point i'm just going to try to use only myrtle as much as possible unless there's one that i really need to rush out a lot of them uh, so with texas as a hot drop for in case things do go bad at certain times it makes it a little bit more reliable for me to run a strat like this so the main thing is now just kind of looking to expand my roster and find ops that I enjoy using the most, the ones that are going to be the most fulfilling uh, when actually playing them. And I do love using Gnosis. Gnosis is a fantastic one. Like I said, Mustima is amazing for me as well. Uh, not great in this event, but she is amazing basically everywhere else. As far as new operators, Yato Alter is the one that I'm looking to get next. Hopefully I can get her and not use too many pulls so I can be saving up for the future pulls. Uh, but I don't know if there's necessarily any that I'm interested in other than that. I know there's some strong ones coming out, but realistically I have a lot of what I need. And so I'm not too worried about having enough to pull for some of these because I, I do have a lot of stuff I still need to clear and if I'm not going to get greedy on most of these banners well then I should probably be fine but I do like to greed quite often and uh, that may be my downfall at some point here <laughs> we, we shall see I plan to keep this account as a free to play I, I don't want to spend but there is only one operator that can actually make me spend if I don't get it so We'll see what happens there, but for the most part, I think I'll be lucky enough. I have the willpower, I have the faith, I believe, and so it has to come true, right? I think that's how that works, but anyway, with this challenge mode, the elite guards, the big guys at the bottom there, have greatly increased attack, so they hit like absolute trucks. As you can see, monster goes down pretty quickly, but... It does buy me a little bit of time as I'm dropping these just to get Milinar's ability back up and ready to go so that he can finish them off. So Tex Alter was there to help stall just long enough. And 
we got that one done. Nothing too bad. Like I said, there's a lot of situations where someone like Silver Ash or Milinar is going to be fantastic for these stages. So this one was actually a bit of a nightmare. That lineup of elite guards up top and then of course the Brigadier, I think is what it was called, the big swordsman that walk up the top a little bit later on. They are the ones that are buff because they're invisible. Very annoying to deal with. But my option here was using Milinar and then dropping people just to get the invis reveal so that Milinar can finish them off. So I wipe three with the first one. I have thorns and I'm going to have monster down here to carry the bottom lane. So whenever the big guys do come through, I can just take them out with monster because he's going to get that greatly increased defense with the S3. And I do have it at Mastery 2, I think, at this point. I don't remember if I showed them or not in the video, but with that, he's getting a lot of attack, a lot of defense, and the ability comes off cooldown very, very quickly, which is why Calsted is such an insane operator. So, with that out of the way, the bottom lane was really all I had to worry about. The top lane only have two of the elite guards left, uh, so I just had to wait for them to start moving, and once they do, I throw down the ability of Gavi Alter, though I should have had her on S3, that would have been a lot better for that situation. But then I activate Milinar and throw down Tex Alter as well, just to finish him off. And then BP will take out the guy in the middle. And that is that stage done. And in the last stage of the video, because like I said, I have not done the challenge mode for the boss stage yet. And I wanted to get this video out because I didn't want to take any longer on it. So I'm going to go in and show you my lineup, show you what I'm working with right now, my plans for the future. And if you have any suggestions, for an operator you would like to see me uh, work on or try out, you know, let me know in the comments. I would love to uh, expand my roster, maybe not in a six-star direction at this point, uh, trying to do some of the four stars, the five stars uh, going forward until I have a big six-star that I actually want to work up here in the future. So, of course, Saria is one that I did want to E2, Eunectus, and Blemishine both as well, but it's going to be a while before I can get those, so I'm not going to worry about them for the time being. Uh, but Bloomshine would go really well with Mud Rock, so I might try that out soon. And the Arts damage is fantastic as well, so uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, the Casters hasn't really changed. Ifrit would be a good E2. Pudding would be another good E2 that I would like to do here in the future. Medics, basically the same. I, I do kind of like the idea of getting Gaviel up to E2 because I do use her quite a bit. Or maybe Susro, I'm not sure exactly. Everything else is basically the same as it was, but that's going to do it for me, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.